What's up, everyone? Thanks for joining. As always, as we talk through this discussion here, as we dive into it, feel free to comment and share below. I want to hear what you guys think on this topic, what your opinion is, so please feel free to do so. Today, we're talking about the topic of mental toughness in the weight room and whether or not you can build mental toughness in the weight room that transfers to the field. And I'll tell you right off the bat, I don't think so. I don't think you can. I don't think it makes any sense. And what do I mean by that? Let me give it a little more definition. I'm talking about the quote unquote mental toughness training that involves just doing ridiculously difficult things in the weight room. Now, is doing that ridiculously difficult thing difficult? And maybe during that difficult thing, does it require some volitional effort to overcome that obstacle? Sure. Why not? We'll say that. Is that difficult thing difficult? Yeah, it is difficult. Does that difficult thing help you do difficult things in the fourth quarter? No, no I don't think so. That's my opinion. I'm no expert, let, but let me explain first where I'm coming from and give you a better definition to work with, right? Because what is mental toughness? My definition, my definition of mental toughness is being able to perform a given task, whether mental, like understanding the play in a game or presenting in front of people, but sustaining the mental task and the integrity of it, regardless of the external stressors being applied. So regardless of how stressful a situation is, you're still able to perform that task as well as you would if there were not any stressors involved mentally, socially, metabolically, actually. We'll talk about the metabolic one in a second. So I would define mental toughness or I would draw parallels between mental toughness like you presenting a really important sales pitch or to your boss or whatever it might be as well as it requires mental toughness to understand the play that's happening in the fourth quarter of a championship game. Those both require some mental toughness, right? You have to perform this given task with the addition of external stressors and you're trying to make sure you do this external, this mental task well and not let the external stressors pull it away or break it apart essentially. So then the question is, does the weight room help that? And my answer is no, it does not. I don't think it does at all. Now you could argue, you could argue that proper training increases your physical abilities and capacity. In turn, if you have a higher level of physical capacity to deal with the stressors of the game, you can then allocate more resources to the mental tasks and efforts. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to perform those mental tasks and efforts correctly, but you could, in theory, have more energy to apply in that direction. Quick example, you have to walk up a hundred flight of stairs and do a math problem and then you have to walk up one flight of stairs and do a, a difficult math problem. Odds are, and I believe there's research behind this, but don't quote me on it. Odds are that that hundred flights of stairs and then the math problem is going to be more difficult to perform than the one flight of stairs because, well, you uh, 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 it requires more physical effort and you have more resources allocated to overcoming that fatigue. But let's say you've gotten crazy amazing shape and you walked up those flight of stairs. Well, then that math problem at the end might not be that hard because you're in such great shape that you can just do that math problem nice and easy as if it were just one flight of stairs. So in theory, the weight room could help your physical capacity. But your physical capacity is not built through screaming and yelling and doing super difficult sets and reps all the time. We know that's not the case. We know physical capacity is built through sports-specific training methods that develop the metabolic system appropriately through a very uh, uh, logical progressive process, not just through screaming and yelling and doing a crazy heavy set. That does not build mental toughness on the field. Now, it might be difficult. It might require some mental effort and volitional effort to overcome that difficult stress of having to lift many heavy weights in a row. But that's not necessarily going to cover and transfer to the field. What actually might transfer to the court and to the field is actually training the tactics and the skills involved in having to overcome this mental obstacle, right? What 
cues can I look at on the field to help me understand the play that is coming and so on and so forth. It's not about just screaming and yelling and doing a really heavy set of reps. But again, if we do improve the physical capacity, we have that potential. So again, my definition of mental toughness involves the ability to sustain a task, that mental task, under the stressor or under the influence of many different stressors, metabolic, that is your fatigue, your internal, how you appraise it. Does one athlete appraise this situation more stressful than another? That's very important to think about it. Again, the appraisal process, you, one athlete might think this game is super important and very nervous and they might have different external influences involved versus another. And because of that appraisal, one might be able to perform the task under less stress. But again, that has nothing to do with the weight room. Someone might have gone in and prepared themselves and done the film study. So if I relate that film study back to the math problem example, right? remember the 100 flights of stairs math problem we talked about? You walk 100 flights of stairs, do a math problem. If you did lots and lots of film study, it's like being really good at math. So when you get to that math problem, it's not as difficult as it might have seen before. So even though you might not have improved your capacity to handle 100 flights of stairs, you might have gotten better at math or the field work and the skills and tactics. And so even though you don't have as many resources to allocate to that mental effort, you still can perform that mental task because you have raised that ability. So again, there's many, many factors involved and I'm sure I didn't touch on nearly close to all of them. But it's important to realize that at least in my opinion, under my definition and your definition might be different, that's okay, sure, whatever. But under my definition of mental toughness, you're not going to develop it by screaming and yelling in the weight room and doing ridiculously difficult tasks. The only way you can really potentially develop it in the weight room for sport is through increasing your physical capacity with long-term progression. But again, you're not actually improving your mental toughness per se, the ability to actually perform the task. You're just allowing more resources to be allocated to completing the task because you're not as tired on the field. At the end of the day, I don't think mental toughness can be quote unquote built in the weight room through very difficult weight room activities. Under the definition of it, it makes no sense. It's not logical to me. Now, if you have a different opinion, feel free to comment and share below. Provide some context to your opinion. Provide your definition of how that in the weight room could possibly transfer to that of the field. And remember, when thinking about that, think about the context difference. Think about what's going on in the field, the demands of actually showcasing your abilities on the field. And think about the demands that showcase them in a really heavy set and one exercise. One is highly static, having to overcome weights, having to lift it, almost solely dependent on volitional effort your ability to just exert force, while another one has some aspect of exertion of force, but many different other skills and tactics and mental variables involved to go along with a whole slew of other things. So does that one form carry over to this other form? I don't, I don't think so. That's my take on it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I appreciate y'all listening and take care.